through the philosopher, though the philosophers and the philosophies of the Epicureans and the Stoics are no longer in vogue today, said David Sorts, and they still find the fulfillment in our modern ungodly world. That, like the orders, the Carmelite orders, uh, the Jesuits, they teach the same print, those principles to control your own flesh by doing it by your own strength and by meditation and by all those other things that you can control yourself. The Stoics, they were a sect of Greek philosophers who received their name from Stoa, a porch at Athens where Zeno taught. They were severe and lofty pantheists and affected indifference in all circumstances. Zeno was born at Sidium, a small town in the island of Cyprus. So, so he was, this man, it was to deny their emotions. They would suppress their emotions. So they are taught, they are taught in essence to suppress their emotions. How dangerous is it, right? Well, here's how dangerous it is. Uh, the result was self-righteousness and pride. The Stoics attempted to be unmoved by joy or grief, pleasure or pain. The result was self-righteousness and pride. Four of their chief leaders of the Stoics committed suicide. Why? Well, if you thought that you could contain and suppress all of your emotions, all of your passions, all of your desires, right? Right? What do you think that's going to do when that fire breaks out? Or if it doesn't break out, what do you do? You kill yourself. Because you'll never get the victory over it. You can never, in and of your own flesh, you can never stop being a sinner like that, right? right. You can never stop having desires and passions. Well, the scriptures teach us the proper way to deal with desires and passions. The scriptures teach us that Christ needs to be the ruler of our soul, that Christ must lord over his people, that we are free in Christ, that we have a life in Christ, that we are given victory in him, and that he is our guide, and the spirit indwells us and teaches us all things and conforms us to the image of Christ. But the Stoics were taught to do it in their own flesh that they could attain to that, right? That they could attain to that and they could be strong like that and they could get the victory and not to show any emotions, right? Reminds me of the Jesuits um, in their training, some of their training, remember? Um, that uh, he, he taught Xavier and those other men, I think it was, wasn't it Xavier? Uh, and, and those other men, I forget what the other guy's name was. He taught them, um, Loyola taught them to suppress all of their feelings, all of their emotions, uh, starvation, hunger, whatever it is, to control all of those things. And they did it, obviously, by demonic power. That's what he was teaching them, yeah. right? I mean, all kinds of weird stuff we won't get into. But anyway, that's what he taught them. He taught them the same mystic teachings. That's the same thing. It's a similar thing, I should say. Same vein, right? It's all wicked. It's all vile, right? He taught that men should be free from passion, unmoved by joy or grief, and submit without complaint to the unvoidable necessity by which all things are governed. So the higher power, so to speak. Now, how is that different than, than, than um, trusting God through afflictions? There is a difference. Because, see, we trust God, and God doesn't tell us not to have emotions, God doesn't tell us not to weep or not to cry or not to be moved by the death of somebody. He does, God doesn't tell us to shut off our emotions. In fact, he tells us to govern our emotions by Christ, to learn of him, for he is meek and lowly of heart, and you shall find rest for your souls, right? He tells us to learn of Christ and, to, and that our emotions are to be governed by Christ. They are to be governed by the scripture. Let me give you an example of this. And I'm not going to get into, uh, you got enough. I think you get enough of the Stoics. So I'm not going to get into that. I don't want to read you. You'll be snoring by the time I'm done. They're kind of a boring group. But anyway, um, I wouldn't have sat and listened to them very long. But let me tell you this. Here's an example of this. And, and I'm going to touch on this. I'm going to teach on this coming up uh, fairly soon. I've been teaching through Mark chapter 5. But I'll give you a little, a little tidbit of it here tonight as we close out. The Stoics taught you know, to suppress all that. What does God teach us to do? Well, God teaches us to handle our grief properly, that we are to grieve, then we're to grieve biblically. When, you know, uh, when Jesus, 
uh, when he went into the, the, the young lady that was, that was dead, and he said, she's not dead, she's sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn, right? And everybody around was mourning, and, and they were crying and everything else like that. And Jesus was very calm, and he was very plain with that. And just like Lazarus, when Lazarus had died, and he said, and, and, you know, he said to him, our friend Lazarus sleepeth, and I go to wake him out of his sleep. Amen. I like that. One day he's going to come and do that for you. Your body's going to be in the ground. Your soul will be with the Lord if you're dead, and he's going he's gonna to wake you out of your sleep. Amen. He's going to wake that body up out of its sleep, right? But anyway, he said that. He said that, and he said he sleepeth, right? And when you and I, as a Christian, handle death, we are commanded to handle it differently than the world does. We are told that we are to sorrow, but we are not to sorrow as if we have no hope. We are commanded against immoderate sorrow, immoderate grief, right? We are commanded against that. That means our emotions, our grief, right, is not, we are, it is not allowed to consume us. We are not allowed to allow our grief and our sorrow to take us completely over and to lead us. We are, to, we are to not sorrow as if we have no hope. We are Christians and we understand. If it's a loved one that has died that is a saved person, then we are to look to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our focus for our loved ones that have died in the Lord, we are given direct commands. No, you're not just to forget about them. You're not supposed to just act like they didn't die, suppress your emotions, don't cry, and get over it like that. No, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to remember the resurrection. You're supposed to concentrate and focus. Jesus said that at death. So what did he say? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Right? That's, Jesus said that. So what does he say to us? Any time of death. By the way, when I die, if I die before all of you, which the way I'm going, I probably will. If I do, don't play the most somber music in the world. You better play some lively stuff at my funeral. Don't be playing no Amen. somber, sad music. It's a celebration. I went home. Amen. Right? Don't play no Presbyterian funeral music at my funeral. Right? Amen. You, better play some so you better play some songs about heaven. Yeah, don't burn me either. Right? I'll do that. But you know what? Don't, don't play that music. Why? And none of, you know what? None of us ought to play that music. We ought to play music about they're going home. They're home. They're already in heaven. We're having this funeral and they're home. We ought to rejoice in the resurrection. I'm not saying it's going to be fun. It's going to be hard. We're supposed to accept death and, and we're supposed to sorrow. But we're also supposed to always keep our focus of our emotions on Christ and at times of death at the resurrection. That's where you're to focus. See, see how that's different than the, than the, than the, uh, the Stoics and those others that teach? No, we're to sorrow. We're to sorrow properly. There's a point of our sorrow that we are not allowed to be immoderate with. We're not allowed to be. You, you see these, um, and, and I'm not being racist either, but you go to some of these black funerals in Christian churches and everything else like that, and they're wailing and yelling and hollering and screaming. And, I mean, they're just, they're just losing all sense of any deportment at all. Now, there's nothing wrong with weeping and crying and doing There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing, but what is wrong is for you to give yourself over to that and become completely immoderate with your emotions. You're to remember the resurrection. Now, what do I do when somebody that isn't with the Lord died and I have sorrow? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do. You're to remember the justness of God. You're to remember how God is right. And you're to focus on how God is right. And you're always to focus on that. You are never to focus on, 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 it's too late for you to do anything about them being in hell. They made their decision. But what you are to focus on is Christ and how he is righteous and how he is, how he is worthy to be worshiped and how what he did was right and the judge of all the earth did right. Amen. You remember that when you have a loved one that went to hell, you remember that, that he is just he is holy, he has never made a mistake, and he is always right. Amen. And that's what you focus on. Not on not, not, nothing wrong with grieving the loss, but you remember Christ is right. That God is right.
that God is holy and he makes no mistakes. And no matter, I, I will grieve. And by the way, God grieved over Satan, over Lucifer falling. So there's nothing wrong with you grieving over that lost person in hell either. You ought to do that. I'm not, I'm not implying that you shouldn't. What I'm saying to you is it needs to be moderate. It needs to be with the end of it being the glory of God. That's how it needs to be. That's how you and I focus, and that's how you and I apply faith with our sorrow. Does that make sense? Amen. We're not Stoics, and we're certainly not Epicureans, right? We are Bible believers. Here comes Paul right in the middle. Next week, we're going to get to his sermon, right? Here comes Paul right in the middle, and he's going to preach him the truth. You're both wrong. He's going to lay them both out, right? And he's going to preach the gospel to them both. On both sides, he's going to preach about the God of the Bible, that is. Hey. So try to remember those things in dealing with your emotions. Uh, don't ever encourage people not to show emotion or not to have any emotions. Uh, they need to have them. But in moderate tears and in moderate crying, it, it is a problem. Because if you allow your heart to be taken like that, then you'll start to blame God and say he's wrong. Yeah. That's where your sorrow will lead you, that God's wrong. That's where it leads you. Immoderate sorrow for even a Christian will lead you to blame God. You'll blame God for it. Yep. You'll fault God. There comes a point to that where we can weep over our loved ones that died and went to hell. But then we have to give it over to God and say, God is right. He is just. He is holy. And I'm at peace with God because he's right. <laughs> right? Amen. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. He that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He that denieth not himself, taketh up his cross, and followeth me, is not worthy of me. He cannot be my disciple. That goes with death, too. And that's a hard pill to swallow, friend. So I'm not making light of it, but I am trying to help you with it. And if you're here tonight and you're not saved, well, bless God, you have the time to get saved right now. We don't have to weep at your funeral. We can rejoice. Trust Christ as your Lord and Savior tonight. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your words. Thank you for the truth. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you that we're not philosophers, but we're Bible believers. We believe this book. And Lord, help us to love each other with our differences. Lord, you've taught us all a lot of lessons, and you've taught some of us that needed it the hard way, because we needed it. But Lord, help us to love each other. Help us to be able to love one another enough we can discuss things, we can shake hands, we can hug one another, we can go home and go about our business and come back and serve you again and do the things that we need to do and help us to be a good example to our children and help us to teach them how to love one another. Lord, we're the only examples they have. God, help us to be the right examples. Help me, forgive me for my failures, Lord, and help me and guide me and teach me. Thank you, Lord, for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.